Hey, it's Miss Nelson. So today I am going to show you how to do another Zen Tangle pattern. And I wanted to apologize that I didn't post this yesterday. I was out. I was stuck at home, so I didn't get a chance to post this. So this might be a day late for you, or it might be just on time, but we are going to learn how to do another Zen Tangle pattern. All right, so this is a fun one. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna com combine two different patterns to make a design, okay? So remember that patterns are where you repeat something over and over again and maybe change it up a little bit. So I just made a square in the middle of my paper so that I could show you uh, the pattern inside of this square. Now, what we're going to do first is you're just going to make a slightly curved line, okay? And then make another one beside it and have it come to a point, okay? Sometimes you have to kind of fix it a little bit. Now you're going to color that line in, okay? So now you have a thick line that comes to a point, all right? So the next step is to make little almond shaped or little little kind of like curved. So you go one line curved and then the other line curved to meet it. Okay, and we're just gonna do that all the way up. And by now you probably notice this looks like a branch with leaves on it. And that's the idea. Okay. All right, so if you, if you wanna put one at the end, you can. Um, mine worked out perfectly to where I had one final one on the side. Either way is okay. Now I'm just going to come to the other side of this curved line and do the same thing again. But I'm going to have these meet. In some plants, there's a, a place where the uh, leaves or whatever is coming out of the stem where they come out at the same spot on opposite sides. And some plants, they don't. Okay, one more. All right, so there I have a branch with leaves on it. Now the next step is just to draw lines up the middle of each one. Sometimes it turns out that one side of the leaf will be really skinny and it's okay because if we just do all of them, even if some of them are different, it all, it will look really cool. Okay, now we're gonna color, we're gonna shade half of these. It already looks neat just like it is, but I'm gonna shade the bottom half of each leaf, okay? So, and I'll just do that and then I will come right back. All right. So I finished shading the bottom half of each leaf and I love this because the end result looks super cool, but if you break it down step by step, it's actually pretty easy if you just follow step by step. Now it's not always easy to make the leaves even and that's okay too. Um, so the next step is I'm gonna fill this square with this pattern. And so I wanna do another line coming in from a different direction. Oops. Just color that in. Make it pointed at the end if you can. And I'm going to draw more leaves, just curved lines that meet at a point. There's lots of points in this drawing. This one is way up here and I have a whole bunch of space right here. So I'm gonna move that leaf down a little bit and just fit them right there. Okay. Oh, gonna use my handy dandy eraser. It's okay to have little mistakes here and there. Sometimes I leave them, sometimes I erase them. And this one had a leaf at the end. I like that too, both look good. So again, these aren't perfect, 
But when I color them in, it'll look really cool anyway. So I'll come right back in a second. Okay, now that I've got um, a lot of different branches filling the spaces, I still have some empty spaces. And sometimes in drawing, it's good to leave empty spaces. And sometimes you want to fill it up. It depends upon what you're trying to achieve. So in this case, um, I think I'm just going to do these little uh, like vine things. Just have them go in and fill in the spaces. And then I'm going to put little berries on them. It's the same idea. So I'm putting a line and a circle instead of a leaf on each side. And the reason that these look cool next to these guys is that this is a thin line drawing and this is a thick drawing. And so the contrast of the two creates interest. It makes it interesting to look at when you've got different sizes of things together. And that's a thing called variety in art. That's called variety. Okay. So I'm just filling these berries in. Now, what happens when you hit the edge of the page? You just pretend like it would keep going if there weren't the line there. So that's what I did right here with this leaf, right? I made it go up to the end. Now, if this line weren't here and it was gonna keep going, it would look like that. But since that line is there and I'm putting it just the dry inside the box, I just stop it where it would be, okay? Now, you can do a lot with these little berries that we just drew. Um, you can leave them as they are. You can color them in. You can color them in, in a different color. Or you can even color them in and leave little white spots that look like where the light is hitting the berries. It makes them look 3D, it makes them look like you could reach out and grab one. So there you have it. There is a fun, more organic kind of Zentangle, organic as a means that it's more natural. Um, and I think it looks pretty cool and I hope you have fun drawing it. Until next time, uh, yeah. Until next time, it's Ms. Nelson. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.